when we have a drawdown, how do we deal with that? One way of dealing with it is by accepting it that something has gone wrong. We've either had the wrong idea about the market or we've had the right idea and we've traded it wrong. But in either case, there's something we can learn from the drawdown, from the loss. Welcome to Better System Trader, the podcast to help systematic traders of all levels improve their trading. We'll give you loads of expert tips and practical advice on system design and validation, money management, trading psychology, and many other topics. Whether you're just starting out or a savvy systematic trader, we're here to help you improve your trading and find more success. This is Better System Trader with your host, Andrew Swanscott. Hi there, this is Andrew Swanscott here and welcome to Better System Trader. That bit of audio you just heard at the start there was Dr. Brett Steenbarger taken directly from episode 25 of the podcast and today we're going to talk about learning from trading challenges so that we can become better traders. Now this doesn't just apply to drawdowns or losses as Brett mentioned but also um, to other aspects of trading as well like strategy development, issues with trading platforms, um, strategies that stop performing. There are a whole range of challenges that we face as traders which can be frustrating and difficult at times. Now I have a special guest who is going to share a story with us in just a minute but first I want to just play a little bit more of that audio from Brett because um, there's a little bit more to it that frames it quite nicely. So let's take a quick listen and then we'll head over to our special guest. Firstly over to Brett. That being said, the whole notion of acceptance, that you accept problems, you don't fight against them, you use them as uh, prods or stimuli for learning, I think uh, is a powerful framework and very relevant to traders. When we have a drawdown, how do we deal with that? One way of dealing with it is by accepting it that something has gone wrong. We've either had the wrong idea about the market or we've had the right idea and we've traded it wrong. But in either case, there's something we can learn from the drawdown, from the loss. And so by accepting the drawdown and then by actively trying to learn from it, we take an approach that could be frustrated and, and make us impulsive, and we turn it into a learning experience that ends up being constructive. So the main point that Brett is making there is to accept the challenge, whether it be drawdown or something else, try to learn from it and turn it into a constructive experience. And that's where today's guest, Thomas Nesneedle, comes in because he is going to share with us an interesting experience that he has had in his own trading. Now, Thomas has been on the podcast before, so uh, you can hear more from him on the Better System Trader website. But let's head over to Thomas now and hear his story. Hi, Thomas. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having me here, Andrew. Now, you've just heard that um, that little bit of audio from Brett. Now, I've invited you on the show because I know that you have a, a little bit of a story that relates to that. So can I just start by uh, asking you, what do you think about those statements that Brett just made? Well, I think that these statements are brilliant. Uh, they definitely are very true, and um, I can relate to that 100%. Uh, so just give you some my own experience, my own uh, story. Yep. I had a pretty rough year. Actually, it started in 2013. I had a very, very good year. Uh, everything went very well. Most of the strategies were making money, and I had uh, some very, very good uh, return in 2013 and you you know what usually happens uh, after a successful year you know you you get really self-empowered and you want to take it to the next step in the following year but what happened in the next year a lot of stuff went really wrong and uh, although it wasn't uh, a big losing year i would say it was a negative break even it was a little bit below break even of course there's been a lot of disappointment and a lot of uh, frustration because of all my hard work and expectation haven't paid off. So 
that was a little bit discouraging, but then happened exactly what, what Brett says in his statement. It gave me new insight, new energy, new courage, and I decided that I will take every possible learning from this, that I will use it every possible way to improve my trading, to get all the ideas together and to to make the next following year my best year ever again. So it was my best losing year ever, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you approach that then? If you, you want to take um, your learning from the, the previous year, what did you actually do to, to learn from that? And you, what were the results from doing that? Uh, I did two things. First of all, uh, I went uh, back through all that strategies and I was uh, looking specifically what happened in the markets that caused uh, a lot of my breakout strategies uh, on future indexes uh, not performing uh, well. Uh, so I was looking for every specific thing that caused the weak performance. And then that, that was one side. And the second side was uh, I had a long list of different ideas from the past. So I decided to take the best ideas and start really implementing them, even put a small team together to help me implementing and testing these ideas. And I basically decided to use every idea, every resource, uh, everything I knew and put it together and make something good out of that. Okay, then. So what did you actually find by doing that process? Like, what was the solution that you came up with? Well, first of all, what I found... uh, that year was quite specific. Uh, one of the things that I realized, and that was very frustrating, that I wasn't that wrong about my trades uh, because a lot of my breakout uh, strategies uh, trades had very good maximum favorable excursions. So that means a lot of strategies uh, were experiencing or having pretty good uh, positive open PL many times, but uh, In that year, 2014, for some reason, there's been a lot of selling at the end of the day and uh, the the strategy just uh, got back to the break-even point and then ended as a loser. So I I had a great maximum favorable excursions and yet I I, I ended with my trades uh, in a losing position. Mm -hmm. So I was really thinking basically that was wrong exits and wrong, wrong timing for exits. So I was really thinking how to handle this better, how to really listen to markets more carefully and uh, how to come up with some leading indicator that could tell me soon enough that the overall mood in uh, markets is changing so I could react really quickly and uh, just uh, save most money I could. And uh, I came up uh, with a solution which I knew from my previous experiences already but never applied into automated trading, and that was market internals. So I basically started with uh, implementing a lot of market internals ideas I had previously and testing pretty big list of different approaches and ideas. And uh, at the end of uh, this uh, six-month process, I found out very, very powerful solutions that uh, can really use market internals as a truly leading indicator. That means uh, it gives me pretty clear signs when markets are getting exhausted enough that the big shift in the overall mood can happen. And uh, of course, then I started uh, using uh, market internals for better timing. Although my timing in um, with my breakout strategies is pretty good, I can't complain about this. There are always uh, ways how to make things better. And one of the things that I realized that can really improve uh, even good breakout strategies with market internals is when you use market internals to change your position size. So what I what I did, I constructed uh, several uh, conditions and these conditions were again tracking the overall mood uh, in uh, the market. And if there was a strong, strong buying or selling mood based on market internals indicators and uh, my conditions, then I doubled or tripled uh, the usual position. And if the signs of the whole market for market internals were was poor, I really reduced the position significantly. And this really started helping a lot as well. So I'm very grateful for this poor 
year poor uh, performance in 2014 because uh, it helped me with with a lot of stuff and since then a lot of good uh, techniques has been have been implemented and uh, improved my trading significantly yeah, that's great. So we actually did a um, podcast episode on market internals a while ago. So if people want more information, they can go to the website and do a search for that and, and find out more. Um, so so basically, you've had some uh, a poor performing year, which has inspired you to um, to investigate it further. And you've tried some new ideas and you've come up with um, some market internals applications. So what has been the, the end result of going through that um, that entire process up until now? Well, there, there's been quite a lot of great uh, effects at the end of the day. So, of course, it was the market uh, internal implementation. Uh, after six months of research and experimenting, I came up with uh, about 40 different market internal conditions. And these market internal conditions uh, are pretty universal. So, I constructed a whole framework around that that uh, helped me to test market internals on all of my strategies very quickly, very easily. and um, I implemented uh, this technique uh, for better position sizing and smarter exits and uh, some smarter entries as well. So this framework, this entire framework uh, was one positive uh, impact of this uh, best losing year ever. And uh, probably even a little bit bigger one is the second one. When I when I put together all the ideas uh, after this losing year, uh, it came out that some of the ideas were so powerful and strong and pretty new that it, uh, including these market internal conditions, that it resulted in establishing my own hedge fund. It took us two or three years of hard work with our team to put everything together, uh, but uh, we're just about to launch very, very, very soon. So two great things. I think that was that. That says it all. Yeah, I think that's a, an awesome result to come out of something that, um, you know, a poor performing year has really uh, turned out to be a, a real benefit to your trading career. So I think that kind of reinforces the point that Brett was making there is that, you know, when something's going wrong, then use it as an opportunity to learn and to become uh, better out of it. And you can really turn these things around into positive experiences over the long term. Yeah, exactly. It's easy when you talk about it from two or three years distance. Uh, of course, at that time, yeah. it was painful and it was very frustrating. But you can't allow the frustration to stop you. You can. You just need to let go of this frustration. You just need to dive deeply into your ideas of anything that you can think about, start thinking creatively, start experimenting, putting uh, things together. And for this kind of stuff... Um, any losing experience, any big uh, drawdown, it's a, it's it's a really good opportunity. Otherwise, if we make money all the time and we can become too comfortable and we're not uh, mm. we're not inspired to keep improving and inventing new things, so if we experience some unpleasant drawdown, sometimes I think it can be like a good call to call us back to the track, back to the journey of uh, continuous improvement and, um, and new ideas. And for this reason, it's, it's very good. And I'm now with the distance, I'm very grateful that this all happened and opened all the possibilities with market internals and with, with the hedge fund as well. Yeah, awesome. Oh, well, thank you very much, Thomas, for sharing your story. I'm sure it's going to uh, help and inspire people, to, especially uh, when you're going through those uh, frustrating and difficult periods. It's um, it's good to know that other people have come through the other side, and then it can uh, it can also happen to us. So, thank you very much for uh, sharing that story with us today. Thank you very much, Andrew, for having me here, and happy trading to all of you. All right. Cheers. Thanks. Okay, so that's it from Better System Trader this week. If you'd like to know more about Thomas or Market Internals too, you can check out episode 52 of the podcast. That's bettersystemtrader.com slash 52. And I'll catch you next week. Thanks for listening to the Better System Trader podcast. The next step is to head over to bettersystemtrader.com for more expert tips, practical advice, and exclusive content. Catch us next time for even more great ways to improve your trading here on Better System Trader.